Rondo, let's look at putting the hands together on the Adagio Sostenuto by Rachmaninoff from Piano Concerto No. 2. First, we'll start off with the beautiful half note chords at the beginning. It's pretty easy to match these up as both hands are basically doing half notes at the beginning. So, let's start off with the first chord. We have our C and G in the right hand just below middle C. And then we have in the left hand our E flat and our C. We're going to have those together. You can use your pedal to hold that while you transition into the next chord, which is D and B flat in the right hand and F and B flat in the left hand. Now, the left hand also is going to play an A flat while we hold the rest of the notes. Now we go back to straight half note chords. Right hand's playing E flat and B flat. The left hand's playing the E flat below middle C and the G below that. Then the right hand's going to transition into F, middle C, and A flat, while the left hand plays its C and F. Right hand then goes to G, C, and G, while the left hand is playing C below middle C, and we're going to play an E flat. Right hand moves up one with the pinky and the thumb. We're playing G sharp, still middle C, because it's B sharp is, is middle C. And then G sharp, and then we have the left hand playing G sharp octave down below. Then left hand plays F sharp while everything else is held. Then the right hand is still holding the G sharp, but with the pinky, but then we'll move to its playing C sharp and A sharp with the lower two fingers, while the left hand continues to hold the G sharp, but we'll now be playing E along with it. Then, right hand still holding the G sharp with the pinky, moving and also playing D sharp and B sharp, which is the same as C. And the left hand is going to be playing D sharp along with that while still holding its G sharp with the thumb. Then we let go of the left hand's G sharp. It's going to switch to playing a C sharp octave while the right hand is playing E and C sharp and still holding the G sharp with the thumb. Although your pedal can kind of keep that held for you. Then the right hand's playing F sharp and D sharp, still holding the D sharp. Then the left hand's playing a B sharp octave, which is the same thing as C's. Now we're going to go into the triplets in the right hand and hold chord with the left hand. So the left hand's going to hold the B and E, uh, an octave below middle C. And the right hand is going to be playing triplets starting with E and G sharp. So left hand holds for the whole measure while the right hand plays the triplets. Now we're going to thumb on B, two finger E, four finger G sharp, then D sharp, E, G sharp, B, D, E sharp, G sharp, B. Now our left hand is going to do a new chord. It's going to hold its E on the bottom, same as before, but move the thumb to C sharp, while the right hand continues to play triplets. C sharp, E sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, E sharp, which is, by the way, same thing as F, G sharp, A. Now. When the right hand plays C, the left hand will move the thumb from C sharp to C as well and hold that for the rest of the measure. Now right hand plays D sharp, F sharp, A. Now time for the second measure. We've got the left hand now still playing E on the bottom and we're going to play B on the top. 
the right hand continues with its triplets B, D sharp, F sharp, A, B, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp. Now, as soon as the, at the same time the right hand plays the B, the left hand will, ch will play, will change from playing B to D. Now, right hand continues and it will hold the D for the rest of the measure. Right hand continues playing D, E sharp, G sharp. Now the last measure of the second line. Left hand still playing the E on the bottom. We'll be playing uh, C sharp on the top. And the right hand is going to be playing its triplets. It starts off with an A sharp, C sharp, E. Now G sharp. Now at the same time the right hand plays the A, which is below middle C. The left hand will switch from playing C sharp to C. And then the right hand plays C, E, F sharp. And when it plays A again, the left hand will switch from playing C to B. And that's the end of the second line. Now, if you want to hear what that sounds like all together, here we go. through the whole measure, but it will also add some notes in on the top. And they're going to be offset from what the right hand is doing, which is playing mostly quarter notes. So let's work on that. Our left hand here is going to be playing E directly below middle C with the pinky, and the right hand is playing a G sharp below middle C. And this is quarter note for the right hand, whole note for the left hand. Now the right hand thumb jumps up to the B above middle C, plays that, and then the left hand plays D sharp, which is a half note linked to a, uh, or a sorry, uh, eighth note linked to an eighth note, um, and then the right hand is going to play an E next, then the left hand plays D, which is a dotted quarter note, and then the right hand plays E sharp, which is the same thing as that. So it kind of goes one at a time. They start off together with that E and that G sharp. Right hand B, left hand D sharp, right hand E, left hand D, right hand E sharp. Okay. Now we're going to be, the next uh, measure is more together and a little more traditionally. The right hand plays its A and E sharp chord. Uh, it's going to the bottom note, the A, is a whole note and will be held for the whole measure. The top note, the E sharp, is a half note. Then the left hand is going to be playing this chord, still E on the bottom, that's a whole note, gets held for the whole chord, or the whole measure. Then it will be also be playing two finger on A, thumb on F sharp. Um, the A is also a whole note, gets held for the whole measure, but the C sharp will not get held for the whole measure. So we play that together. Sounds wrong, but here's the resolution. The right hand plays F sharp. Then the hands will together um, play a note. The right hand plays five finger on A, and the left hand slips the thumb from C sharp to C natural. While still, of course, holding the other notes. So all together that sounds like this. Uh, comes the next measure, we have the right hand playing thumb on G sharp, that's a whole note, gets held with whole measure, and the top finger playing D sharp, um, I like to play it with one and two, and then the left hand is playing E, whole note with the little finger, G sharp, whole note with the middle finger, and B, thumb, that's a dotted half note. Then the right hand plays E while the left hand continues 
holding. Then on the last beat of the measure, they come in together with the right hand playing G sharp with the little finger and the left hand playing D with the, th with the thumb. And you can let go of the B. And then, this is the fourth measure of the third line. We have again a, in the right hand, we have a half note chord, G sharp and C sharp above middle C. And the left hand playing E with the pinky still, whole note, it's held for the whole measure. Then the upper fingers are going to play A sharp and C sharp. And those are only half notes, just like the right hand is playing. It all goes together. Then the right hand will switch to A on the bottom, E on the top, while the left hand switches to C. Still holding the E with the little finger. And then the right hand, while continuing to hold the A with the thumb, changes to F sharp on the top, let's go of the E, and the left hand at the same time, let's go of the C and plays B. So that sounds like this, that measure, make sure I line everything up right. Okay, now the last measure of this third line the right hand's playing a G sharp octave above middle C. The left hand's playing an E octave below middle C. Then, uh, that's a quarter note in the right hand, half note in the left. So while the left hand continues to hold, the right hand repeats the G sharp. You can let go of the G sharp with the thumb. Then, while the right hand holds that G sharp, the left hand plays a new chord in the treble clef. It's going to play G sharp, E, and B. Now the right hand is going to go on with some eighth notes. G sharp again, F sharp, G sharp. Now when we now we're going to have the right hand play another G sharp eighth note, but the left hand is going to play this chord. Thumb on the A above middle C, three finger D sharp, four finger C sharp. Now the right hand continues on with A, F sharp, and here when it, the right hand plays E, the left hand will let go of the C sharp with the four finger and play pinky on B. So all together this measure sounds like this. This is some similar sounding things. Um, we're going to have our right hand playing our chord B above middle C, E above that, G sharp above that. This is a half note tied to an eighth note. The left hand is playing the B, two Bs below middle C, and the E below that. And those are half note chord. So since the right hand is also tied has its half note tied to an eighth note chord, we know the left hand will change first. It's going to change to the chord B below middle C. And then, oh no, no, sorry. We're going back to, oh, whoopsie. We were still in treble clef. Okay, erase that. We're playing B, E, and G sharp in the right hand, but the left hand is in treble clef. So, we're playing B, right below middle C, E, and then, after the half note, the left hand moves up to G sharp, F sharp, and B sharp, which is a, actually C. Plays that, and holds it, while the right hand plays F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, F sharp. Now you'll notice there is a line marking above those notes. And what that means is they want you to play it with a little space in between the notes. So when you're playing it, you don't just go, you leave a little space. Now we're going on to the second measure. Right hand is playing B, E, G sharp. The left hand 
still in treble clef, is playing B below middle C and E. Both are half notes, but the right hand is still tied to an eighth note. So the left hand moves first, going up to G sharp, D, and B. Then the right hand moves and plays some eighth notes, D, E, D. Now we come to another 3-2 measure. Um, we're going to do some eighth notes in the right hand. It'll be playing two finger on C sharp above middle C. And the left hand is still in, in treble clef, so it's going to be playing an A octave with an E in the middle. Now the left hand is playing a half note chord, except for the E. The E is only a quarter note. Uh, and that'll come into play here in a minute. The right hand changes to D. Now, when the right hand goes to play E, the left hand's going to let go of its E and play C sharp instead. Then, um, the right hand will hang on to its E, but it's also going to add A with the thumb, that's a half note, while the left hand switches to playing C sharp on the top and E on the bottom. Also half note. So the right hand's holding its A with the thumb, the left hand's holding its chord, while the right hand forefinger continues to play E, then D, E. Now we're going to change both hands. The right hand will play still E on the top, but G sharp on the bottom, and the left hand will play F and D. Now, the G sharp with the thumb is a half note and gets held for the rest of the measure. The D on the left hand is also a half note and gets held for the rest of the measure. But the other notes are shorter. So the right hand will then play F with the top finger, and then D, and then when it plays C sharp, the left hand will play E. Now, last measure. Here we go. We're playing E and A in the right hand. And we're playing C sharp, this is the middle C, and E in the left hand. They're both half note chords, but the right hand is tied to an eighth note. So, left hand moves first. It goes up to the G. E, C sharp chord, which is a half note, gets held for the rest of the measure, while the right hand plays D sharp, E, D sharp. And these also have those line markings above it, which wants a little space. Now, I'm going to play the whole first page to see if you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go.
some practicing to do on that, but you can get the idea of what it sounds like, and it's so beautiful. And that's the first page. <laughs>